scarred for life, baby. After playing with this thing, I am definitely scarred for life. In a good way. Let's have a look. Alright, champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom, it's Windows Pro time. All right, g'day, tally ho there, champs. Now, if you champs are new around here, come on, sub up, join the Woo Train. If you like this video, you know what to do. And follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. I'll post benchmarks and stuff there. Now, let's have a look at this ROG Strix Scar 2, the RTX versions of the GL504G. Now, the last generation Scar was a beast, and nothing's changed here. It is still a beast. It's actually quite a cool customer. I'll get to that later, but it's got everything a gamer wants, and even extra stuff like it has an SD card slot. No, three USB 3.1s, USB Type C, no Thunderbolt 3, audio jack. Now it's a combination jack. I wish it was audio in and out, but that's what it is. Mini Display Port 1.2, Ethernet jack, and of course the power jack. And it has a 230 watt power supply. So with that kind of power supply, power limit throttling shouldn't be too much of an issue, given that it is pretty cool as well. The VRMs don't seem to be overheated. Of course, this comes with an 8750H and the choice of an RX 2060 or an RX 2070. Now, if you're wondering which one you should get, I personally would be happy with the 2060. That's perfectly fine. As you'll see later, I test most of my games at medium settings because I have the 2060 version. Now, I did test that high too, but really to get the most out of this display, and it has one of the best displays on gaming laptops, one of my favorite. It looks so good. It's nice, bright, vivid. The games look awesome. And it's one of the fastest displays too because not only is it 144 hertz it is three millisecond response so it's pretty much the fastest so if you're a hardcore gamer this is the biz but to get the most use out of that 144 hertz display you want to get the frames over 100 as close to 144 frames as you can and with an rtx 2060 that means medium settings now sure it will play games like battlefield at 70 sometimes 80 frames per second ultra settings even PUBG. i was very surprised it was well into the 90s nearly even 100 frames per second at ultra settings which was really surprising to me but if you want to pop over that 100 frames per second you need to get medium on the more demanding titles of course you know stuff like fortnite and overwatch and stuff yeah you can put up the settings a bit more thermals not an issue at all every single game i played at medium settings 3.9 the whole time that cpu was 3.9 in between 35 and 45 watts never dipped below 3.9 even with battlefield gpu from around 1300 even up to the 1900 sometimes it would boost and of course the higher the settings you go the hotter it gets and the lower the clocks would be on say the gpu not so much on the cpu any game that really reduced that cpu below 3.9 was actually battlefield even at ultra settings battlefield was the only game where the clock reduced to you know mid threes 3.3 3.5 so the cooling's very good on this never really went over 90 degrees even with ultra settings it's got the gamer look it really does look good that finish on the top is awesome you got the rgb it's even per key rgb it's it's a gamer's dream there. So I would say get the RTX 2060 if you only want to play at 60 frames per second ultra settings, even though it will play much higher frames than that. But if you just want the ultra settings, this will still do it over 60 frames per second any game. But if you really want to play those high and ultra settings at the high refresh rate, so look, over 100 frames, you want the RTX 2070. That's where it sits. And I think that's how you should make the choice there. So yes, you can get the six core i7 8758 you can even get the i5 8300H up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. This actually comes with single channel RAM. I put in dual channel when I've done the testing, of course. M.2 SSD up to a terabyte. You can have a hard drive in it as well. And they do have a hybrid hard drive. Mine actually didn't come with a hard drive. You know, 9560 Intel wireless. And it actually has really good antennas. One of the best receptions you're going to get with Wi-Fi on this model. So let's get into the game. As I said, I tested all these games at 1080p medium settings because I want to get the frames as high as I can to take advantage of that display. And even if you want to go to ultra settings, as I said before, 90 FPS PUBG, nearly 75 frames per second ultra settings, Battlefield 5. But at 1080p medium settings, 
DSX Mankind divided with 85 frames per second. We had GTA 5 at 122 frames per second. So that's great because you're getting that nice connected feeling of the 144. You're getting the frames right up there. PUBG, 128 frames per second. Woo! I'm friggin' stoked with that. That's awesome. Witcher 3, 111 frames per second. Apex, 102 frames per second. I don't know why that was harder on the system than PUBG, but that is what it is. Fortnite, 114 frames per second. Again, I don't know why PUBG was playing faster than that. I don't know. Metro Exodus, and this was even with RTX and DLSS. Yeah, 100 frames per second. Uh, friggin' awesome. Overwatch, 140 frames per second. And Battlefield 5, 121 frames per second. Now, Battlefield 5, you actually turn on RTX which you'll have to do in an external monitor. Yeah, you get a big haircut, you know. I don't think the 2060 is great for RTX stuff, like especially in a laptop. But, I mean, it struggles even in a desktop. So I think the 2070 is the better option if you want to have RTX features. But again, Metro Exodus, yeah, it was 100 frames per second with RTX on. So it'll depend on the game, I guess. Now, heat and noise, very good chassis on it. There's not much heat at all, like 40 degrees on the bottom, on the top. The noise, honestly, sometimes I actually had to check if it was in performance mode. Like, seriously, it's not that loud. And even when it cranks up, it's got a, I'm not going to say it's a pleasant sound, but it's just not as annoying as some other laptops that, quite frankly, you know, drive me insane, especially if I haven't got headphones on. So this is a great gaming machine and um, stage tuned for my review and uh, if you really want to see a content creation review i actually like to see how the 2060 goes for content creation make sure you slap that like button or say yeah yeah, yeah i want to see that and i can highly recommend this for gaming it's freaking awesome you know not even getting temps over 90 degrees even when i had an ultra setting never got the cpu over 90 and the gpu was like in the 80s excellent 2060 is where it at. I'll be happy with this as a gaming machine. I would actually really like to have one of these. So anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And until next time, guys, tally ho.